Brown Renewable Expeditionary Energy System, GREENS, is an ONR-supported, revolutionary way to bring solar power to the front lines. The GREEN system is a new design of a solar or renewable power system. At the moment, everything is fossil fuel. You have fossil fuel generators or you have batteries. You have um, tactical batteries which are charged by either tactical vehicles or AC house power. Greens is the ground renewable expeditionary energy source. There are two pieces to the program. One is a hardware demonstrator that's a hybrid photovoltaic battery system to enable the Marine Corps to use solar energy to provide some of their energy needs. The other piece of this program is a toolkit. We're testing a lot of commercial off-the-shelf renewable technologies, and we're going to have a capability where a Marine can enter in what their mission profile is, and it will tell them which components of the system to pull out and take with them in order to provide renewable energy for their needs. It's vitally important to have power on the battlefield, especially these days in a regular warfare environment. There's a high demand for computing devices targeting systems, communications devices, and small units are widely dispersed. They all require resupply. So the Greens project increases force protection by reducing the need for logistical resupply. The 300 watt renewable system will provide a valid alternative to small generator use in the field, and Greens will cut down the tremendous logistical train it takes to deliver power right now. Greens is important because within the Marine Corps, we are uh, fighting in areas that are remote that require very difficult logistical trains to get to. And there is a lot of fuel and other types of batteries and power systems that require heavy logistical burden. I'm gonna be a lesser load to carry, less to deploy, um, be able to set up and disassemble and deploy ourselves a little bit easier and set up a little bit easier in other spots. The ONR-sponsored team of Naval Surface Warfare Center at Carter Rock and the Marine Corps Systems Command has worked at a fast pace to bring solar power to the front lines. NSWC Carter Rock is doing all the heavy lifting. They're purchasing all the components, doing all the testing, doing the system integration, and developing the toolkit. So the intent of looking at renewable energy is to examine the potential for having remote systems that don't require fuel and don't need fuel delivered to them. The whole Greens effort, the development of the toolbox, the evaluation of commercial off-the-shelf pieces of technology is really designed to provide a set of metrics to show the warfighters exactly what they can use renewable technology for. Additionally, this system will provide cost savings over its lifetime by reducing fuel purchases. On the commercial product testing side, a variety of photovoltaic panels, inverters, charge controllers, and batteries have been tested at NSWC Carter Rock, and wind turbines are being evaluated at Aberdeen Proving Grounds. It could power a set of communication radios, it could be quickly deployed, and really power remote equipment without the need for fossil fuels that would provide not just an advantage in terms of the environmental impacts, but also a tactical advantage, which is important for the military. Greens is another example of ONR's commitment to supporting the fleet. ONR is funding it, and they're providing really the basis for the entire commercial off-the-shelf evaluation. They're also providing guidance and helping to manage the overall program. The green system was set up and tested at NSWC Carter Rock in West Bethesda, Maryland. It then underwent 300 watt continuous power testing at Navair China Lake during this year's Empire Challenge. Ambient temperatures during the China Lake exercise exceeded 116 degrees Fahrenheit. Even under the extreme temperatures, the system provided 85% of the rated energy on average. ONR and the Marine Corps were quite happy with the results. What we're looking at doing is trying to get that 85% up to 100%. And so the goal in the next two years is to continue to develop and likely to return to China Lake in the following year. The power and energy requirement is only going to continue to increase. The more great gadgets we come up with, that we can give the Marines to help them accomplish their mission better, unfortunately, will always require more and more power and energy. So anything we can take advantage of on the battlefield to get power and energy to the Marines and that we can do in a fashion that's man portable helps them keep their expeditionary capability to accomplish their mission. 
This part of the program really has only been in existence for less than a year. So for what has been delivered to date, I think it's quite dramatic. I think it's going to be hard hitting once it does ultimately get fielded by the Marine Corps Systems Command. I think it's outstanding. I think it's going to be um, uh, an asset. Uh, it's a great first step to get us a more maintenance-free power supply.